Jimmy Otto here, and we're standing on Arthur Kill Road with our friend Joe Borelli, councilman from the 51st District here in the South Shore. Joe, you like trees, right? Love trees. I love trees here, I love trees there, love trees everywhere. But where do I don't like trees? Arthur Kill Road? In the bed of the map street of Arthur Kill Road. So, Joe, you like fences, right? A fence is good, a nice sturdy fence, chain link fence. I think Big, that's a good thing. Beautiful fences. So, you're not anti fence in Not anti fence. Where would you be anti fence? If I would was... only be anti fence if the Parks Department put it in the bed of the map street, which were this close to Widen. Now, that's a head scratcher, Joe. Why do you think they would do that? In July of 2014, Councilman Borelli's predecessor, Councilman Vinny Ignizio, and I wrote to Mayor de Blasio and said, the Bloomberg administration took the money for this capital project, this widening of Arthur Kill Road. They pushed it out to 2026. Can we get that back? Can we get it back for fiscal year 16? A few months later, we get the word from Mayor de Blasio that, in fact, the money was pushed back into 2016, which is, good. We, which is a good thing. And we have this big announcement, and we let the world know that Arthur Kill Road would be widened. Now, everybody knows it, Joe. This is not a secret, right? The agencies of all kinds know it. The public knows it. There, there's Social been a, media. a community advisory committee for this project for the past 10 years that has been talking about this project uh, in conjunction with a widening. The whole time, it's always been in conjunction with a widening of all the So world. this is not a surprise to anyone. Not new. Not new for Mitchell Silver. Not new for our Borough Parks Commissioner. Not new for the administration. So the next thing you know, Joe, what happened? We have a fence. This fence. This in, very fence. In the red zone. In the what red is, zone. What does it mean to be in the red zone? Joe? The red zone is where the street's going to be widened for an additional lane and some sidewalks and potentially a nice uh, paved bike path. Now, just to recap again, everyone knew where the red zone would be. It's actually on a map. It's a big map. The city has a big map of all the places they should build the fence, where they shouldn't build the fence. Uh, yet that didn't really seem to matter to them when they were building this big, not so beautiful fence. Now, Joe, was the fence the only thing they put in the bed of the map with? No, no, no. You see, uh, even worse than a fence, because a fence is movable, are trees. Because the city loves trees. And trees are really, really, really expensive to get rid of. So they planted a fence. They planted trees in the area where we are going to fly. Now, do you think the city has to pay its own tree restitution fee? In other words, would the city have to pay itself thousands upon thousands of dollars per tree that they just put up there to remove? So Red let's zone. fast forward because there's lots of agita in between about fits and starts of this project. The project should have already started. It hasn't. So fast forward to last week, we meet with the DDC and the DOT, and we finally get word that acquisition is going to start and the project is, is finally really going to start in earnest. It's a fiscal 21 uh, project. So it's calendar 2020, so next year. Okay. And we raise, sort of tongue-in-cheek, the issue about what you referenced, tree restitution. And don't tell me the Parks Department is going to come for their money for the trees, haha. -ha. And the look on the faces of, of the DOT and the DDC folks said, yeah, that's going to happen. So let's, renew, uh, let's review this again, Joe. So the Parks Department put trees in. So there were no trees at, at, at one point, and there was no fence. Now, of course, we're going to have to pay for the removal of the fence, but we're also going to have to pay a tree restitution fee for every bit of the diameter, the height, the width of all the trees. It's going to be really, really expensive, and this is just an example of the city uh, just kicking itself in the shin constantly. If you want to know why we don't have uh, sidewalks next to Owl Hollow Park, because you guessed it, trees and the inexplicable cost of tree restitution fees. So listen, we're having a little tongue-in-cheek fun with this, but on a serious level, it's, it's not a head scratch of how we got here. This was intentional, and we said it at the time, when we saw the fence go in, when we saw the trees go in, guys, don't try to use this as an excuse to stop this widening project. Guys, don't think you're gonna get paid for a tree. And now you have a couple of agencies, because clearly there have been internal conversations, and you have DOT and DDC anticipating the need to find the, the, the resources to pay a sister agency for trees that should have never been implanted uh, in the first place. So, uh, Councilman Borelli and I just sent a letter to the Parks Commissioner to sort of review this history and say a year in advance let's not even go down forgive the pun the road of tree restitution you guys should have never planted the trees don't expect any money from the other agencies and don't use this as an excuse to stop this widening that needs to happen we have tons of trees we just don't need them in the red zone 
Joe, if only there was somewhere else where they could plant a tree. 